All right. Hi, guys. I am here today with Zachariah Zeiger. He's one of the freshest West Coast wave riders of his generation. And um, he grew up body surfing the beaches of Orange County, California, since he was seven years old. And now at 25, he still describes it as something that is his favorite hobby and his soul therapy. So um, today we're just going to talk about how he got into body surfing, where he goes, and then also um, a lot of people know about your de close to death uh, experience at the wedge that we'll talk about. And he's been with Slide Handboard since I think even before I was a part of Slide. Yep. So um, almost day one. Almost day one. Yeah, I remember that first day meeting you, and um, it was a long time ago, five yeah. years ago, so it's been, yeah. been cool to be friends with you for so long. So let's just get right into it. What let's was your first, yeah, your first body surfing memory? Who took you out? Where was it? What can you remember? Yeah, I was six yeah, or seven was years six old. Six or seven years old. Uh, I was in Corona Del Mar, California. Uh, my dad used to like to take my sister, like to take and, my sister uh, and I every week to the beach. And so uh, he just threw us in and kind of learning, hey, these things that push water around, we can ride. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it became quite the, quite the hobby. So was your dad already a body surfer or? Yeah. Just... So my grand, my, yeah, my grandpa uh, has been surfing in Newport down at Blackie's by the pier, you know, for 60, 70 plus years. And so he taught my dad how to surf uh, in Newport okay. in front of Del Mar and passed it down generationally. Yeah. And so does your sister too? Does she, she do it as no, well? No, she does not. She prefers to, to drink her water out of a glass and I prefer uh, to drink salt water in the ocean. So we, uh, yeah. kind of yeah. 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 Um, occasionally, I uh, don't get to do that as much as I would like. Or something um, moving into a different season of life with him, I'd love to. I'd love to keep doing. I know that fathers and sons who get to surf together uh, kind of keep close bonds, and so it's something that I'd, I'd like to jump into for sure. Cool. Yeah. And was he the first person to take you to the wedge? He was not. I actually was uh, discouraged from surfing that crazy spot for most of my life. Um, in fact, I kind of deviantly started surfing it, uh, like freshman and sophomore year in high school. Um, I think a friend took me actually, I mean, I, growing up, you know, you, it's one of those waves where, uh, you know, people talk about it and then you hear stories and then you look at videos and it becomes, I don't know, for me, it became something that I was really passionate about before I ever surfed it. So I kind of <laughs> had this funny love for this wave that I had never actually even touched. And I had, you know. I guess just watched video and stuff. And so this one time in high school, my buddy's like, Hey, let's go down and get in the water. I'm like, nice. uh, okay, okay, let's do it. And then, so now, I mean, how was it? I know there's like a, a wedge crew and we talked to Mel uh, last week about it. And what was your kind of perception of the crew? And was it kind of, um, I guess, scary to be around them and kind of, you know, looking up to this crew and knowing that they've been ripping it there for a long time. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. They uh very intimidating at first. You know, you have this group of guys that have dedicated their body and their life to a sport that is unique, like body surfing. And especially at a wave like Wedge, you, um, you know, these guys really take their, their craft seriously. And guys like Mel, Guys like uh, Tim Burnham, Sean Starkey, um, and then even some of the younger guys like James Lewis and Scott Matthews, Parker Varner, they're all guys that, you know, they take their craft seriously and they, um, because of that, they can be intimidating, but it was, it was more of, um, I want to do this proper and I want uh, to surf this, this wave well. And so for the longest time, you know, didn't get waves, was, you know, kind of at the low end of the totem pole, still technically am, but um, <laughs> it's, it's something that, uh, took a lot of time and, and it was just, it was more relationally. Like I just got to chat with the guys over a number of years and got to pick their brains. And so it, it started off as something that was daunting and I'll never be like these guys. And, um, but then it started to, you know, over time become a friendship and they started to look after me and, um, would give me tips and would, you know, yeah. would kind of shepherd me a bit in the water. And that was really kind of them. Yeah. So, I mean, you went out like 
what was your biggest wave? You were out there during Hurricane Marie, right? Like, I was, I yeah. There, and I, we were living in Venice Beach at that time, and we came up and watched you out there. Like, I mean, those were like 30-foot waves. Yeah, day. it was hectic. I uh, That was actually probably one of my biggest wedge days I'd ever paddled out. Go figure, Big Wednesday was on my 21st birthday back in 2014. <laughs> So wow. the whole night prior, I was super excited, super nervous, throwing up. Like, I, I didn't know what to do with myself. Um, so biggest I'd ever surfed wedge. I mean, 15, 20 foot proper. Um, so yeah. the faces get get pretty big. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I some of the most fun days aren't even the bigger days. It's some of the days with the best shape and, and kind of the best swell direction. And so, um, yeah, I, I definitely have seen it when it's massive and stupid and scary and i've seen it when it's small docile and playful and um you know what is the kind of wave where it when it works it works and when it doesn't work it doesn't work but it it's a beautiful time kind of year round and swell in and out of swell season cool so tell us about your accident and kind of what happened that day i mean you're you're a good body surfer and a good waterman and it can really, I mean, what happened that day, I think affected the entire body surfing community. I saw a lot of um, people come together and, and support you that, you know, you've never even met or just the whole, yeah. you know, it affects the whole community. So um, let's just talk about the day, what happened and. Yeah, um, for sure. Uh, it was a Friday. Normally I spend most of, if not all my entire day, a Friday down at Wedge. And so um, I was bodyboarding in the morning. Normally the guys wear Speedos down there, and so I always have one underneath my wetsuit. I was bodyboarding, wetsuit on, black ball went up, and so we go and put our boards away so we can keep playing. And I had this conversation in my head of like, do I take my wetsuit off and it's warm out? Like, do I just body surf in a Speedo like all the other boys? Or, you know, do I keep the wetsuit on? Decided so to keep the wetsuit on, went out and body surfed. You know, it ended up becoming like a 10 to 12 foot day. It wasn't very big. The From the photos of the wave that I took when I got hurt, it was only like six to seven feet. And so, you know, I got, I rode four or five waves, was fine. And then took a wave uh, that kind of, it did this weird kind of below sea level suck down and it clamped. And when it clamped, I got pushed uh, essentially in a, to the sand and I snapped my spine in half, uh, was paralyzed immediately. Well, going back to that quickly, just is there any way to predict or see that before you get on that? Like, or is it just like bad luck? Or yeah, is it I think. The yeah, it's a great question. I think you know I've seen people riding wedge a lot longer than myself get hurt. Guys yeah. a lot more experienced than myself. Guys who are a lot more talented than myself. Um, and so what that has taught me is that you can do everything right and you can, you can be in the best shape of your life. Um, but when you're, when you're playing with something as big as mother nature and especially as something as big as wedge in and out of swell season, you know, you can do everything right and be in the wrong spot. And so I think, you know, looking at some of the footage from the wave that broke my back, I was kind of frustrated to be honest, because I remember having a conversation with the lifeguards, like asking them what had happened. Cause I, I thought I wrote everything fine. I got to the bottom of the wave. Okay. And, I didn't really get pitched and thrown too much. It was more of just compressed to the bottom. And yeah, I felt like I did everything okay. But the nice thing. It's yeah. really bad luck. Really. Pretty much. Yeah, it was it was a fluke. Wrong, wrong spot at the wrong time. Right. Um, and yeah. It's scary. And so you were paralyzed immediately. Yeah. And so what did, what was going through your mind at that time when that yeah. happened? Yeah. Um, first thought was like, make sure that you can try to come up for air at some point. Uh, yeah. Whenever you're under the ocean, you're getting thrown around. Uh, you kind of need to stay calm. And so I kind of just went into that old memory of, okay, I'm getting thrown around. I need to stay calm. Um, luckily, I somehow floated to the, to the surface and there were some body surfers locally and from Hawaii that were down and actually some slide crew. And uh, it was great. They uh, They rallied and jumped in and grabbed me and pulled me to the sand and uh, yeah, it was quite the ordeal. Wow. And then, um, what happened after? I mean, you, you went, they, I'm assuming got an ambulance. You went to the hospital. I mean, yep. 
did you already, were you like, I'm never going to walk again? Like, was that what was going through your mind? Did you think you're going to die? I mean. Yeah, I, I, I was kind of unsure, to be honest. I, it didn't really seem like a daze. I mean, it definitely felt like reality was, was right in my face. But I, I guess I wasn't sure. The doctors had said that I had broken my spine in half and that I probably wouldn't walk. And judging by my body and being paralyzed from the neck down and only able to wiggle my toes, I'm thinking, hmm. You know, a majority of my life now is going to be different. I'm probably going to be in a wheelchair. I'm probably going to have some sort of paralysis, uh, body surfing, surfing in general, skateboarding. A lot of the things that I felt life from uh, was going to have to shift and, and become something different. And so, yeah, I was for a few days before they did surgery, I was uh, in a pretty funny place. Um, not necessarily discouraged, but I guess curious as to what all was going to happen because it was such a kind of a weird fluke bad luck, whatever you want to call it situation. Yeah. I remember Steve went that night to see you in the hospital and he was, he was like, man, his attitude is so good. (laughs) Like, (laughs) and you know, you're, you're, you were positive and, you know, even though going through that, I mean, um, it's a scary thing. So yeah, it helped though that, you know, Steve and some of the wedge crew guys immediately came to the hospital. You know, it was, it's easier to have, kind of a positive mentality or a, um, a different perspective on things when you know that people one believe in you, love you and will rally around you in your time of need. And so, you know, within the first few minutes of me being in a gurney at Hogue hospital in Newport beach, there were wedge crew guys that had stopped surfing and come and delivered all my stuff. There were guys like you that, you know, came from out of town to come and visit me. There were family members that popped in to say hi, you know, it, the, the community really did rally around me and it was something that I hadn't necessarily experienced from the surf community, if I'm honest. Um, not all the time from Wedge Crew even because it, it is such a kind of hierarchical um, just kind of system that they that, that right. is kind of implemented now. And so it was, it was a beautiful, um, I guess, shift in my eyes of like, whoa, I'm loved and people believe in me and I don't have much to offer right now in a hospital bed, but people are still willing to come and see me and chat with me and love on me and pray for me and encourage me. And yeah, uh, I really did get to see the body serving community rally. And it was funny because, you know, I was chatting with somebody about this today, actually, before getting to sit down with you guys and, you know, slide handboards is, uh, at the forefront of kind of a body surfing kind of new trajectory. And it, it's been cool to see the community of body surfing grow in the last 10 years, but I, I can attribute a lot of it to you and Steve and kind of how you guys have envisioned something that helps so many different people. And, you know, you guys with the dream, having other people like Mark Cuban and Ashton Kutcher and, and other people locally believe in you guys has allowed you guys to love on a whole different crew community in the body surfing world. And I, you know, I got to experience a lot of that love and support because of slide and, and outside because the community of body surfing is being tight knit now and it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's growing and it's, it, it's international now. It's not just in Southern California at wedge and, or in Venice or, you know, in, in Australia, like right. what, what the body surfing community is doing is growing and it's becoming closer and it's becoming kind of a, hopefully a catalyst in the surfing community. But I, I experienced a lot of that, personally through my accident and it was such a beautiful uh experience well and thanks for your kind words from yeah um, it really means a lot and um yeah it's amazing to hear that yeah totally it's been it's been quite the journey so let's talk about your recovery then yeah Um, so, I mean, you thought you weren't going to walk again. You thought you weren't going to skateboard or body surf, get in the water again. And now you are. You're doing those things two years, not even two years later. Yeah. Um, I was just watching some of your skateboarding. And um, so you're back up there. So, yeah, what, I'm doing it all. How There's was, a- the, yeah, I mean, how was the recovery? What did you have to do to get better? Totally. Uh, honestly, it was a lot of prayer. It was a lot of, it was a lot of God answering. I mean, the, when you do something as traumatic as breaking your spine in half, there's, I mean, we're human. We can't do anything. Doctors with all the medical devices can only do so much. And so hundred percent of my recovery was prayer. I didn't do any rehab. I taught myself how to walk and run again. Um, I got myself back in a pool and I was kind of doing the water polo egg beater stuff for a while and teaching myself, you know, how to, how to redo life. And so most of my recovery is by myself 
it was time essentially walking around a tracker in the ocean with God. And it shifted the way that I have relived my life. Um, so yeah, recovery was gnarly. It, it was gnarly because I was out of the hospital after six days, which is absurd. It was gnarly because I was walking after a few weeks. It was gnarly because I got in the water three months after I broke my spine in half. Um, it was gnarly because I'm, you know, doing things on a bodyboard now that I wasn't doing before I got hurt. And, um, you know, I, life, life has changed a lot. You know, don't get me wrong. There are a lot of limitations now. There are a lot of days where the wrong temperature outside makes my body hurt. Um, and so, uh, you know, I'm having to relearn what I can't do just as much as I'm relearning what I can do. And right. so I've, yeah, this recovery process has been a lot of fun because it's been quite the adventure. Okay, let's try this today. And if I'm sore, it's like, okay, I'm not going to try this today. And, uh, yeah, it's been, so it's been a trip. Has it affected? So then the way you body surf, has it affected? Like, have you gone out at the wedge body surfing again since the accident? Yeah, uh, I have how successful I was. I don't know, <laughs> but I, uh, it was funny. I actually kind of put wedge body surfing on hold. Uh, not body surfing in general, but definitely at wedge. And what I have kind of allowed myself to do instead of that is body boarding wedge. Yeah. And so I've been just, there's just something about having an extra piece of foam underneath it that, you yeah. know, mentally makes you feel safer. And so all that to say, I've been body boarding a ton. And this, there was a fairly decent size swell a couple months ago down at wedges of fluke. Mm -hmm. I'm blanking on the, on the, I think it was maybe September or October anyways. And it was pretty big. It was like 15 foot. And I ended up swimming out <laughs> and I didn't body surf it, but I paddled out with the guys and floated out there and didn't have a board. And it was just me and my boys and the fins. And it was, um, man, it was, it was a, it felt like home again. And it was the first time I'd been out when it was big without yeah. a board. I love how you're like, Oh, not that big 15 feet. Like that's big. <laughs> <laughs> For you, maybe not, but like for anyone else, I mean, 15 feet is pretty big. So yeah, yeah. that's amazing. But I've, I've been able to, you know, I've been able to be around guys that surf really big waves and really well. And I've, I don't know, I, I guess I hear myself say 15 feet and there's a part of me that's like, oh, that's cool that I used to be able to do that. But I, I guess I'm honored to have been around a community that gets to do this kind of stuff. Like I, you know, there are some people around the world that don't get to watch people do this. And I've gotten to, you know, just enjoy watching people do this. And so I'm, I'm having this kind of new love for, I mean, surf and skate and this community. And yeah, it's been, it's been a, been a blessing for sure. So now we, you've been with Slide now for five years. So yeah. when I came on, you were, you already knew Steve. So I mean, you've been with Slide before I even was, which is crazy to think about that you've yeah. been a part of our team for that long. Um, so what first made you, um, did Steve reach out to you? Did you reach out to Steve? How did you first become a team rider? Yeah, I honestly, I think I just sent him an email one day because I saw his product out. I don't know if I saw it, seen it at Wedge or where, I, to be frank, I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But I do remember emailing him and just kind of, wanting to hear more about what he was doing. And there was just something different about kind of the way that he was doing his business and the way that he had thought about what he wanted to do. And so I, it was more of just kind of tell me what you're up to. I think yeah. if I remember right. And yeah. so we had chatted a bunch, we'd met up, gotten lunch and went out and body surfed together at wedge a couple of times. And it was just fun. I just got to meet a new friend essentially. And, um, got asked to be one of the team riders and it was cool. Cause it, you know, I, I was a nobody and still I'm a nobody, but I had somebody believe in me. And I think yeah. even in the smallest ways, when you have someone believe in you, um, not what you can do, not the things that you can perform, but like who you are as a person, when you have somebody believe in who you are as a person, it changes the trajectory of stuff. And so, you know, my experience of slide was, Oh, there's this very, very small startup company of a guy with a brilliant idea. And he wants to change the world by loving people and encouraging people to love what they do. And, that was kind of my experience and I kind of wanted to jump on board and you guys were lucky enough to invite me to a couple of events and, and sponsor me at a wave house body serving competition. And, you know, so there were these things that I got to experience through slide that um, had nothing to do with surf. It had everything to do with just friendship and you guys having an idea and believing in it. And so that was rad. And so, yeah, for the last five plus years, I've just kind of gotten to 
on the outskirts watch you guys grow and, and blow up essentially. And, you know, I've seen parts of my story do the same thing. And so it's been cool kind of together and separate watch uh, stories just develop. And, you know, five years ago, six years ago, when you guys were out of Venice and figuring out what you guys were going to do, you know, there was a plan and it's, it's been crazy, really fun. Crazy. Just in the past five years, what's changed and to go you back. You guys got married and had a yeah. kiddo and now yeah. you guys are all over the world. I mean, it's, <laughs> I love telling people about the slide story because it, you know, it is such a beautiful picture of when you have people passionate about something and willing to do what it takes to, to bring other people that same passion and that same love for something like the ocean or whatever it be. Um, you know, good things happen, I feel like. And I've seen that happen for you guys. And I've been just blown away and encouraged. Well, thanks. It's still just the beginning. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ah. Uh. So much more to do. <laughs> so much. And that's the adventure, though, is like the, the sky is the limit. Like there, there really is this kind of beautiful future ahead. And I think, you know, I'm trying to remember that. I'm trying to, you know, I chatted with Steve a little bit before this and just relearning perspective on life and relearning how to take things not for granted anymore and, and really go for it and not be fearful or complacent. And, right. you know, I'm, I'm with you thinking that the sky is the limit and the future ahead is bright and adventurous. Yeah, well, you're definitely the type of person that we're so proud to have a part of our team. And um, it's a, like you said, like, it didn't matter how, I mean, you're a talented waterman, but above all, it's just a good person. And um, that's, that's what really makes a team. And that's what grows a community and a sport. And that's why having people like you in this community is so important, because mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here um, without without you it wouldn't be here without you know the team and the community that's pushing it forward so thank, thank you. you i appreciate that yeah it's mutual i've i've got much love for the slide family yeah there he is <laughs> Hello, guy. Uh, so last question um so what are your predictions for body surfing and actually we didn't talk about handboarding um what's your favorite board First, before we get into the final question, what's your favorite board? So my favorite slide board is by far probably the carbon fiber Bula. Um, that thing is so sick. And what's what's funny about that is I've actually not even gotten to write it yet. Uh, my <laughs> i i got to I got to write it a little bit at, at Wedge when Shawnee Noka and the boys were down. Yeah. Um, but it was so much fun just for the few waves that I got. Okay. The one that I've been using a lot over the last few years has been the um, the Hexplex. Okay. The, the green hex flex. Um, I'm not even sure if those are even still on the market, but no. they, yeah. So I have loved that board. Okay. And still well, use that. Get you a carbon Bula. They are <laughs> out of stock, but will be restocked very soon on pre pre sale. Um, hopefully this month. So sweet. We'll get you, one. you guys will have to get out there and check them out. Everyone watching. <laughs> We'll be there. Um, all right. So final question is, what are your predictions for body surfing and handboarding uh, going forward in 2018 and beyond? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I think we're right at the cusp of something cool. I think over the last five to 15 years, body surfing has grown uh, exponentially. Uh, the community involved uh, has weirdly taken it seriously again. And so, um, and then you've got companies that are buying into it. And so I think Body surfing as a whole is going to continue to grow. I think people are going to continue to get excited about getting in the ocean however they can with loved ones. And so one of the easiest ways to kind of start that journey of becoming somebody who loves the ocean is body surfing. And I think, you know, there's a reason why there are a lot more people in the ocean and there's a reason why body surfing is exploding. I like to think that they're one and the same. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking course. the time to talk with us. Zachariah. Um, also, ladies, he's single. And I am. That's the a fact. Coolest, best guys that we know. Um, and so excited to have him a part of our team and just overall just great person. So thanks for taking the time. And we know. Uh, you. Yes. We're match.com. Oh, yeah. All of those. <laughs> So good, you guys. I appreciate you much, and uh, I was honored to get to hang out with you guys for a bit today. All right. We'll see you soon. Bye. All right, you guys. Bye.